Well guys, believe it or not, it is certainly that time again. I know there's been a ton of Google News lately and it just keeps on coming as we just got the Android 16 Beta 3 update. Overall, it's not a huge update by any means, however, there are some new items we can talk about. We got a few new additions, we got some UI cleanup, and we did get some important fixes. So real quick, let's get into everything you need to know and give you some details as to where things go from here. And of course, if you appreciate Android coverage like this, consider subscribing to the 9to5Google Google YouTube channel as we have a lot more content like this in the works and trust me, we do not want you to miss out on any of it. As I mentioned, we just got the beta 3 update installed on our devices and this update is officially the first version of Android 16 to hit the platform stability milestone. At this stage, we do have the final APIs and behaviors in place where developers can start final compatibility testing for their apps as there's going to be no major changes on the developer's end from this point onwards. After this, we can expect beta 4 sometime in April and potentially beta 5 in May depending on how things go, with a full release happening sometime after that. Maybe at Google I.O., maybe a little bit before the Pixel 10 launch, we'll just have to wait and see. With that out of the way, let's get into what's actually new with Android 16 Beta 3, starting with some of the biggest features first, like a new battery health page, which I feel is long overdue by the way. Here you can get a somewhat detailed overview of your battery health. Right now, the information you get is pretty basic, with an estimated percentage of charge the battery can currently hold, some easy to access articles regarding how you can keep your battery health in good shape, alongside a shortcut to charging optimization settings if you feel you need them. Again, I definitely feel like this was long overdue when it's nice that we finally have something comparable to what we see on iOS. Interestingly enough, the Android 16 Easter egg did get quite a few changes here as well that show us a sneak peek at how the live activities notifications will work within Android 16. For now, the preview we see is pretty basic, but in order to access it, activate the Easter egg as you would normally by going to settings, about phone, tap that Android version text a few times where you'll be brought to the Android 16 logo. Long pressing on that will activate the rocket ship Easter egg game where you should notice a new auto button which puts the ship in autopilot mode. Once selected, you should notice a live activities notification in your notification shade that details where the Android bug is going alongside the distance, time, and a progress bar. To me, this is a fun little way to demo how the live activity notifications will work in the future and actually has me a bit excited to see how the implementation goes once more apps support this feature in the future. After that, we do have a handful of what I would consider more minute changes. For example, rebooting the device adds this new material U icon to indicate the home screen is loading, a nice little attention to detail. There is now a new connected camera page in connection preferences that is brought over from the Marsh feature drop that gives you quick access to some articles and some information on what apps have access to the connected camera feature. On a smaller note, there is now a close app option in the multitasking menu when long pressing on an app, to me a somewhat negligible change. The search bar in settings now has a darker text box when in dark mode. Underneath the face and fingerprint unlock page in the settings, there is now a longer explainer for the available features. And lastly, to round out these user facing changes, keep in mind this Android beta does bring the March security patch. Along with it comes its own host of fixes, which we did make a full video about, which we did make a full video about, and I will leave a link down below in the description if you want to check it out for yourself. Finally, in terms of what's new, there are a few items to know on the developer side of things. One is that there is now support for AuraCast audio with compatible low energy hearing aids on the Pixel 9, a nice little accessibility feature as AuraCast will allow your Pixel device to broadcast audio to multiple nearby hearing aids, being incredibly useful for those that need it. And the Android beta replaced the high contrast text with an outline that quote, draws a larger contrasting area around text to greatly improve legibility. Basically, it puts a darker, lighter outline behind text and it should help with eye strain a bit and should make complex text easier to read. Then there are a few developer and user reported issues that were resolved in this patch as well. One being a fix causing excessive battery drain in some cases, another fix that sometimes cause devices to reboot unexpectedly. They also fix an issue that caused the at a glance widget to display out of date information on the always on display. It's also worth noting the date and time text in the quick settings panel has been fixed too. In the past, the date and time text was black, which basically made it invisible on previous betas. And it's nice to see that it's been fixed now. And of course, there were general fixes everywhere that impacted system stability, performance, and Bluetooth pairing. Still though, keep in mind this is a beta. And if you do see any more issues moving forward, please make sure you submit them in the Android 
Android beta feedback app. As I said earlier, Android 16 has hit the platform stability milestone. We're getting at least one, maybe two more betas with the final build being released sometime after April or May. Personally, I was expecting quite a few more changes than what we've received so far. Part of the reason I think might be because they're releasing Android 16 early. They may have lost a lot of development time to get this version of Android on track. And at this point, I'm unsure what parts of the rumored Android 16 release will be coming still. There were rumors a while back that there would be a quick settings redesign that we still have no sign of implementation yet. Very recently, we caught wind of a leak showcasing a lock screen redesign from Mystic Leaks on Instagram. In the leak, we see you can maybe make wallpapers based off various shapes and color themes, plus a weather effect with 3D motion to spice things up a bit. Although we have no clue if this is a real legitimate leak or just a custom ROM being touted as a leak. We also heard Android 16 is supposed to support lock screen widgets, which also hasn't shown up in any of the builds we tested so far. I'm really hopeful we do see changes like this at some point down the line, as I really, really want to see more out of Android 16. So we'll see what happens. Personally, if we don't see any big changes this upcoming beta, then I think it's safe to say what we have is what we have, which would be a shame as it means we would have to wait until Android 17 to experience any significant changes as a whole. With that said, let me know what you think of the Android 16 beta so far. I see a lot of comments joking around saying it's Android 15.1 and kind of longing for the old days of bigger updates, and I'm curious to see how you guys feel down below. Personally, I think it's another cleanup year as it was with Android 15, and something tells me a lot of these big features these days are really being pushed out through Google app updates as opposed to actual operating system updates, and I'm curious how Android will grow regardless of how or where these features come from. With that said, I'm getting out of here, but before I do, huge shout out to our channel members on screen right now. Simply put, we appreciate you guys for supporting us on this journey, and don't forget to grab our latest wallpaper pack Interstellar in the community post. If you're not a channel member and want to get your hands on this for yourself, consider taking a look at our channel memberships as you will get access to our huge backlog of wallpapers as well, and trust me, we have quite a few of them. Until next time, this has been Jordan Floyd with 9to5Google. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.